Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys a detailed look at my LEGO Iron Valiant mock. Like with all my other builds I've shared on this channel, I'll have a link in the description below for both the parts file and instructions. The total part count for this mock is 476 pieces, and at the time of the recording this video, it's estimated to cost around $80 to $85 Canadian. This does not include shipping or handling, and your final cost may vary. When the Paradox Pokemon were being shared online at the time Pokemon Scarlet and Violet just released, I knew I wanted to try and build some of them, and I thought it was a refreshing concept to revamp some of the existing Pokemon designs. Although this is my first Paradox Pokemon mock to date, I do hope to do more in the future, but let me know down in the comments below which Paradox Pokemon is your favorite. As I was looking at all the Paradox Pokemon, I gravitated towards Iron Valiant first, since I figured it would be relatively easy to design by using my Gallade and Gardevoir mocks as base. What I thought would be a simple rework of my existing mocks became much more time consuming as I realized that even though it shares many similarities, they weren't as easy to build in LEGO and some of its details were much more complex than originally thought. Also if you're interested, I'm pretty sure the shiny variant is pretty easy to build since in-game it's just chrome silver, so the easiest and closest match would just be used light bluish gray all over, which is one of LEGO's most commonly used colors. One of the hardest parts to design was the head, since I had to capture and combine both details from Gallade and Gardevoir to try and match Iron Valiant's unique design. I did try to borrow some of the building techniques from my previous mocks where I could, and some of you may recognize them, but a lot needed to be reworked to fit into this new design. The entire head is attached with the Matic T-Bar piece, so you can angle it up and down and rotate it side to side with a pretty decent range of motion, and this just helps you to get to different looks and poses. I would say that the base of the head uses more building techniques from our Gardevoir mock, with some tweaks to fit this large mohawk-like feature, which borrows some techniques from my Gallade mock. I think the mohawk, or whatever you want to call it, is slightly larger here than on my Gallade mock. And coming around to the back of the head, I also included these two metallic hair loop details, which is just done with a handful of pieces. Each of them are attached with the clip and bar pieces, so you can angle and rotate them, just to help you change up the look a bit. Taking a closer look at the torso, it was probably the next most challenging part of the design, and had to be built using different sub-assemblies. The first was the upper body, which wasn't too hard to design, even though it's pretty slim, but luckily there wasn't too much detail that needed to be included here. The second was the lower body, which was much more challenging to design, as I had to find a way to attach these, not sure what to call them, but uh, shield elements or sub-assemblies I guess, which there are five of, so I had to make sure there was enough room to fit all of them in. When I initially built this mock, it stood much taller than I expected, so I actually shortened the torso a bit, just so the height was a bit more in scale with my Gardevoir and Gallade mocks. I think the torso here more closely resembles Gallade's design, with this triangular shaping up top and its egg-shaped waist at the bottom, but with some elements from Gardevoir, like its center spike in the front, and these shield elements, which I think are supposed to resemble Gardevoir's cloak or dress. Each of the shield elements or sub-assemblies are attached with the clip and bar piece, so you can angle them a bit, but the connection is fairly weak due to the weight of them. So they just tend to fall downward like this, however each one adds a point of stability, which just helps to balance the mock a bit better. Looking at the legs, like with the torso, I shortened the length here as well from my previous design to help lower the overall height of the mock. In my original design, the legs were about 2-3 to three studs longer, and I think this new shortened length looks more proportionate with the rest of the body now. This also lets the shield elements or sub-assemblies touch the ground now, and lets them be angled out a bit more, which I think resembles its in-game design much better than my initial design. For the legs themselves, the build is pretty simple, and there's articulation at the hips and knees, but the range of motion is limited due to these shield elements here. It's a bit hard to show since the mock is a bit finicky, but you can rotate the legs at the hips and knees, and you can even splay them uh, side to side a bit, and each joint is connected with clip and bar pieces. Arms are another tricky part of the design, since one of its most notable features is its side blades, which form together to create a double bladed weapon. Since I wanted to include this feature, I had to bow the arms around the blades so they could have the option to have the blades docked or together like so. Arms have articulation at the shoulders, elbows, and fingers. You can rotate and bend the entire arm at the shoulders with a pretty good range of motion. You can bend the elbows, but it's a bit more limited just due to the way it's built. And you can open and close each of the fingers. You can also see at the palm, there's a cheater clip piece. And that's just used to connect the uh, weapon a bit more securely so that it can wield it around in different looks and poses. And then on the sides of the forearms, you can see there's a 
these clips and that's just what's used to connect the blades when it's docked on the sides. Finally, for a sense of scale, this is how it looks compared to a minifigure. And as an added bonus, this is how it looks compared to my Gallade and Gardevoir mocks. So that's pretty much it for this video. Let me know down in the comments below your thoughts on this mock, as well as any suggestions for my next build, and images for yours for a future video. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video, thanks for watching.